Welcome back fuckers. Alrighty, in today's video we're going to cover a couple of tips and tricks, keybinds, and a couple of things that I've picked up along the way that's going to help you up your game in BVR combat in the F-18 using the, uh, the AIM-120 Charlie AMRAM missile. So we're going to get straight on into it. Uh, no mucking around, let's get in, try and keep this as short and sweet as possible. So first things first, we're going to bring up our AMRAM page. And you can do that by hitting, if you don't know the button, it is called Select AMRAM. So you've got Select AMRAM, Select Gun, Select Sidewinder, Select Sparrow. Make sure you've got all those bound to your HOTAS somewhere, or remember what they are on the keybinds, so that you can bring up. Because if you don't have this, you can't fire a missile. Okay, so this is how you bring your AMRAM up. So we're going to go hit and Select AMRAM. It's going to bring up this right now. Okay, so we've got the HUD symbology. It says AB with a zero because we've got no AMRAMs fitted to the aircraft. It's X'd out because our master arm is in safe and we're on the ground. And then on our left and right DDIs is what we're going to be looking at, or MFDs, whatever you'd call them. So we've got size and RCS. So size is the actual size of the target you're going for. So generally you're going to be attacking fighters. So we're going to set it to size small. RCS stands for radar cross section. And we're also going to set that to small. So we're telling this is for our missile seeker head. I don't know if it is the actual aircraft, but the actual AMRAM, it has got a radar inside of it. We're telling the radar inside the missile what it's looking for. So we're saying we want it to look for a small target with a small radar cross section. When it finds something that meets that, that uh, characteristic, it's going to lock onto that more so than if a, uh, you know, finding a big target. That's what it's for. S mode doesn't do anything. Okay, it's not incorporated into the sim. You can change the button, but it doesn't actually do anything at all to the Hornet, so don't worry about that. Then we're going to come over to our radar page. So we're just going to bring up, we're just going to Awesome tracker right there. All right, so what we're looking for, our scan bars. Okay, so we've got two bar by default. We're gonna hit the push button. We're gonna go to four bar scan. If you don't know what the bars are, there's plenty of videos on um, radar operation, okay, on what the bars actually do. We wanna set it on four. I'm not gonna go into depth of what it does. This is just the setup that I use. So four bar scan, we're gonna leave it at 40 nautical mile range. So this is 40 nautical miles at the top. And then each of these dashes are stepped down. So 40, 30, 20, 10. The reason why I put it on 40 in the AMRAM is you're not gonna be shooting at a target outside of 40 nautical miles. You're not gonna be shooting at a target outside of 20, to be honest. Okay, so anything, having your radar at any further than 40 nautical mile is a waste of time because the radar can't see past 40 nautical miles. To begin with okay you're not going to be able to get you're not going to get a lock much outside of 40 nautical mile in the best conditions in the hornet as it stands right now so there's no point having the radar looking any further than that because it's just a waste of time so 40 is what you want the biggest 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 game changing thing that i've found that i've found in my travels in the hornet that's upped my game 100 percent in terms of being more uh, efficient with my kills is this guy here the data so you're going to hit that and then up the top right there's a number four so this number four is the amount of seconds your radar is going to hold a track file on the display so what that means is if our radar loses lock so say we had a target right here locked up and our radar lost lock okay it dropped the lock if our radar doesn't pick the target up within four seconds okay it's going to boop, disappear off the radar and you're gonna to have to find it all over again which is a real pain in the ass when you're in TWS auto mode and you're doing a crank or whatever and you're just you know the you're just putting yourself into a left or right turn and as the radar is sweeping across it just drops lock every now and then and then you've got to reacquire the target it's a pain in the ass so change this from eight sorry four to sixteen okay so in sixteen seconds and I promise you if you do that your radar is gonna maintain lock on targets a lot lot a lot more reliably okay so if you have had dramas with the radar in the hornet dropping out and losing lock all the time that's your fix right there okay you're welcome go kill things so we've set it to 16. our radar sweep 140 we're going to change it to 40 degree sweep because we want to be using a quick refresh rate because we're going to be using tws mode which means that we're going to be slewing the radar with our tws cursor so 40 degree sweep and our prf is going to be set to high okay on high we're going to press set to save that is it done okay amram is configured good to go so if i select our aim 9 right now and then i go back to our aim 120 you can see it saved our settings four bar 
40 nautical mile, 40 degree sweep, my interleave and 16 on the data. Happy days. So that is configuring your aircraft when you're flying. So you do that as soon as you get into the air. Well, you can do it on the ground if you want, like you can do it. It saves it on the ground. There's no reason why you can't do it. You can do it on the ground, but you want to do it before you get into a situation where you're going to be having missiles lobbed at you or you're going to be lobbing missiles at you. So you, okay, you want to do as much stuff as you can in a nice controlled and chilled out environment rather than flying head on at an enemy aircraft and then having to go, oh shit, I haven't, uh, I haven't set up any of my weapon systems. And then you're trying to do this while they're shooting missiles or closing on you. All right, you're just making it hard on yourself. So set this up either on the ground before you take off or once you've taken off and you're on transit to the, uh, the cap station, set this up. So by the time you get there, you're ready to rumble. Okay, you're good to go. You're ready to start shooting things down. That's your radar. <clears throat> Next thing is your uh, SA page. Okay, so you find your SA page by going to the TAC menu. So the bottom middle button, support, press it again to TAC, press SA. So on this page here, we can use our scale button to pop our scale out to 160, all the way down to five. Okay, so you can adjust the scale here. And we're also going to be using the step function. I'll show you that um, in a second when we get an actual live target in there to shoot down. So we've got step and scale those two buttons are going to be useful for you okay so that is that now with our key binds I'm going to quickly cover the key binds nice and quick so the first key bind you want to be using or assigning is your sensor control switch which is these guys here okay sensor control switch right left aft forward and depressed okay we're going to be using those so make sure you've got those bound and what they do is they select which sensor your TDC is controlling. So sensor control switch right will put the diamond in the right hand MFD, which means now when I use my TDC, I can slew my TDC cursor around on the radar. Okay, it moves around using my TDC cursor. If I press sensor control switch aft, I get the diamond down here on my SA page. Now if I use my TDC, I can slew my TDC cursor around on my SA page. So wherever this diamond is, this is what your TDC will control. So if you're trying to use a radar, right and your tdc or your sensor control switch is being assigned to this one so your diamonds down here and you're up here trying to use the radar you're like why is my radar not working because you're moving it down here all right so if you want to use your radar sensor control switch right get the diamond and you can use your radar okay so that's first key bind next one is your radar elevation up and down Okay, so you're going to bind them to something, radar elevation control up and radar elevation control down. And when I use those, you can see these numbers here. So we've got a number 5 and a minus 5. So this is the altitude in thousands of feet that your radar is looking in front of your aircraft. So right now, if our radar was turned on, it'd be looking minus 5,000 feet underneath the ground level, and it'd be looking 5,000 feet in the air. Right? Imagine a cone projected out in front of your aircraft. That's the piece of sky. So we can go radar elevation up, and it changes radar elevation okay so now it's looking at 37,000 feet and 23,000 feet we can go radar elevation down now it's looking at minus 90,000 feet and minus 99,000 feet okay so it's very important that you have that bound so that you can make your radar look at the appropriate altitude for the target you're trying to find radar elevation up and down done and done um, what other ones uh, key binds that I have bound extra Okay, so this one here, so this, what I'm about to say, only applies, the push button that we're about to use as a bind, only applies if you use a radar on the right hand side. If you use a radar on the left hand side, you will bind this button, right, right MDI PB5, you would bind left MDI PB5. Okay, if you use your radar on the left, you, you, we're binding these push buttons, not the actual name of something, okay? So what we're binding is our range wall scan track while scan button TWS RWS okay so I'm not pressing the button now All right, I'm looking my mouse is over here you can see it moving here I'm pressing a bind TWS RWS TWS RWS TWS RWS I've got it bound to my joystick so I can switch between TWS and RWS without having to press the mouse on the button so again the button for that is 
M, right MDI PB5. All right, there you go. Right MDI PB5, done. And that's gonna help you change between range wall scan and track wall scan. The next one you wanna bind is this one here. Right MDI push button 13. So when you're in uh, track wall scan mode, you've got auto and manual. So by binding this button, you can switch between TWS auto mode and TWS manual. Okay, so very important that you have that bound to something on the joystick. It's going to speed your life up and make you a lot more efficient with the radar usage. So it is again, right MDI push button 13. So again, my mouse is over here now, switching with my HOTAS. Done. Um, the other one is, what else have we got here? The range. So I've got these bound, right MDI push button 11 and right MDI push button 12. So my range of my radar, if I want to bump it out to 80, 160 or drop it back to 40, 20. So as, you know, if we get a pop-up contact of like we're flying along and we get uh, AWACS calls out, uh, we've got a pop-up target uh, within 10 nautical mile. Rather than having to slew my TDC down here, it takes time I can just go bang bang down to 10 and then it's going to be up the front here closer to 10 nautical miles so you can quickly change your range on the fly without having to press these push buttons okay it just makes your quality of life a lot better the other one I've got bound as well is this guy here right MDI PB1 which is your PRF changing so high interleave medium interleave medium and high so I can again press the key bind to cycle between my PRF settings, which is a very, very important thing. You need to have bound to something nice and quick because if the aircraft suddenly changes direction, you need to be able to change your PRF to match the aircraft, otherwise your radar will lose lock. Okay, so you need that bound as well. And then the last two <clears throat> are for the SA page. So on the SA page, I run the SA page on the bottom DDI here. So again, if you use the SA page on another MFD or DDI, whatever you want to call it, you need to bind the scale, okay, which is AMPCD PB8 in this case. And I've got that bound to uh, N for November on the keyboard. All right, so I'm pressing N on the keyboard. And N, 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 and it cycles between your scale. And I've also got this one bound, which is your step button, AMPCD push button 19, all right, which is B on the keyboard right next to N. And again, you can bind this whatever you want. I'm pressing B for Bravo on the keyboard. You can see it's hitting step. I'll show you what those two things do to help speed up your quality of life as well. Okay, so that is pretty much all the binds I can think of. That, that, that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so that's our key binds. Done and done. Next thing is aircraft loadout. All right, we're going to bring up a mission resources page. Right, sorry, left alt apostrophe. I'm going to select the the loadout you do not want to run, which is I've called spam ram. Load that up real quick. Left control Z to speed up time because I don't want to wait for them to load. So they're loading me up right now. Yep, we loaded. All right, cool. So you can see now if we go back and back. We've now got 10 AIM-120 Charlies fitted to the aircraft. You can see they're on the aircraft. And we go to external view. We've got 10 AMRAMs. Hell yeah, you say, right? Why the hell wouldn't I take 10 AMRAMs? Okay, that's 10 kills. I can kill 10 things. Why would I take less than 10? Why wouldn't I take all the missiles? I'll tell you why, because you're slow and you're unmaneuverable. And in BVR, you want to be fast and nimble. You'll be able to change directions quickly and maintain or increase your speed quickly. And the Hornet is not a fast aircraft at the best of times. Okay, it is slow compared to an F-16 or a Tomcat. It is at a massive speed disadvantage and in BVR, speed is king. Okay, the faster you can go over your opponent, the longer your missile is going to be able to travel and have a higher speed when it hits the target. Okay, the faster the missile is going, the harder it is for the target to defeat the missile. Because it's got more speed <clears throat> when, it's, uh, when it's honing in on you. And you want to maximize your airspeed and i'll show you in a second a quick test so that loadout 10 amrams do not use it and i'll show you why in a second so the loadout i would recommend is going for would be this one here speed time up this is as many missiles as i would take if you're doing cap there we go that's it so outboard pylons clean remove the pylon 
Okay, so to remove the pylon, you right click and you save remove pylon. Make sure it's got an X on it. Otherwise, if you just go remove payload, speed time up again. So the difference between, all right, so remove payload leaves the pylon on the aircraft. Remove pylon removes the actual pylon and the payload. So you can see the difference there. We've got two pylons, one pylon. That difference of having a empty pylon just sitting there in the airflow is making drag on your aircraft, which means the Hornet is slower, way slower, and you're not going to be able to get those top end speeds which you need when you're doing missile combat. So we're going to jump into a, uh, an aircraft. So let's just go restart the mission. We're going to jump in. I've got two aircraft loaded up. One's the spam ram loadout, and the other one is the good loadout that I've that I've called. So we're going to jump in. We've got the ten am rams on board. All right, and we are at eight o'clock mission time. So we're going to just go as soon as we spawn in. I'm going to turn autopilot on. We're at about thirty-seven thousand feet, or whatever it's put us at in the mission. We're going to go in full afterburner. I'm going to press autopilot on, and we're going to just speed up time for five minutes and see the top speed that the Hornet can get to. All right, so let's do that. So afterburner on, autopilot parametric altitude and then we're going to just press left control Z and speed up time and we're just looking for 805 and then we will slow time back down which is left shift and Z All right and then we'll just have a look at the HUD and see what our speed is so we've got almost there alrighty 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and pause. All right, so our top speed, we're in afterburner for five minutes with 10 AMRAMs on board and a fuel tank. All right, at Angels 36.3. We were in afterburner for five minutes, and our top end speed in the Hornet was Mach 1.15, which for BVR combat is slow as balls okay we do not want to be there going that slow so now let's do the same test uh, pause restart we can do the same test with the good loadout we can do the exact same thing so i'm going to spawn in i'm going to unpause go us put in full afterburner hit autopilot on and we're going to speed up for five minutes and then check the speed so here we go autopilot on after burner engaged and speeding time up. Same deal. So we're going to go for five minutes. Three minutes. Four minutes. it when it gets to 8.05 on the dot, 2, 1, and boom, pause. Righto, so we have got six AMRAMs on board, and our outboard pylons are removed. Okay, we're still at the same altitude, 36.340, and our MAC number, MAC 1.54. So by having an extra four AMRAMs on board, we slowed ourselves down from Mach 1.54 to Mach 1.15. It took us five minutes to get 0.15 Mach on the aircraft, as opposed to having two less missiles and the pylons removed, and we've got Mach 1.54, which is a much, much, much better speed for doing BVR combat. Okay, the faster, the better is what you want. So that's the reason why you don't take 10 AMRAMs. They're slow as shit and you'll get shot down because you can't compete against an F-16 or a Tomcat that's hauling ass at like Mach 1.6 plus throwing AMRAMs at you, okay? You just get out, outranged because of speed. So you want to maximize your speed. The Hornet's not a fast aircraft, full stop, compared to those ones. So you want to maximize your performance in the Hornet by not taking as many missiles. That's my two cents. Take it or leave it. <laughs> No, but seriously, don't. Don't take 10 AMRAMs, okay? Don't be that guy. If you see someone with 10 AMRAMs, cannon fodder, all right? Stay behind them because they'll get shot down. Use them as a, uh, a shield for you, and then you can kill them with the six-missile the six loadout. 
Right. <clears throat> Let's uh, get our SA page up. All right, so we're just going to pause. No? All right, so I'm going to press the button now. So on our... There we go. So we're going to change our scale. I'm going to go to scale is 80 nautical mile, and I'm going to press B for step. And what that's doing, when you press the step button, it boxes a data link contact. It's going to cycle through. So if you had a whole thing of data link contacts, okay, it's uh, you're going to be pressing step a lot. You can't choose which one you want it to step to. It just steps ran, like automatically between each data link contact. So when you press step, which is this one right here, which was AMPCD PB19, it's going to cycle between every data link contact. And when you do that, it's going to put a box around it, just like here. And on the left, it's going to tell you the airspeed. And on the right, it's going to tell you its altitude. Okay, so it, this uh, this is our AWACS here. So it's doing 0.4 Mac at Angels 30. So 30,000 feet doing 0.4 Mac. That is our AWACS. And then we've got a enemy target right here, right next to us. So if we unpause and we press B and then pause again, you can see this target is doing 0.9 Mac. It is at Angels 36.9. That's the direction it's flying, that little... Uh, arrow coming off the front of the diamond so it's flying straight at us and we can see down the bottom right here it's close enough that it's been uh, iff to correctly it's got we know it is an su-27 and it is bearing 266 for 22 nautical miles right over on our left wing and we can see it right there there it is okay so there is a bandit right there and you can see that all off of that page. And the reason why you want to use the step function is because you can have that locked up on your target you're going for, and then you can get its altitude and its airspeed at a glance, which is going to help you. So if you know he's at Angel 36, you can come up here to your radar and quickly see, slew your radar to Angel 36 to find him. All right, so I'm going to restart the mission, and we're going to go ahead and do an attack on that SU-27 now. Okay, so we're going to jump in, we're going to take the good load out, we're going to go into the jet, and we're going to configure ourselves, so same deal, we're going to be max speed, we're going to go AMRAM, we're going to configure our weapons, just like we did on the ground just before, full bar scan, 40 degrees, data is going to be on 16, 40 degree sweep, and we're going to be in high interleave, we're going to press set, we're going to change to TWS, and we're going to crank over, head over towards... Uh, MiG-29 nails. Alright, so that's a 29, we're just going to put that on the nose. So we're flying right at it. Alrighty. That sounds more like pilot. Okay. So another cool little trick, if you didn't know this, if you want to cycle between your SA page and your HSI real quick, you press uh, whichever page your SA or HSI page is on. So in this case, it's on the bottom one. So we're going to press sensor control switch aft to get the diamond. And then to switch between our situational awareness page and our HSI, I just press sensor control switch aft again. And we'll switch between our HSI and our situational awareness page. So you can switch between just by pressing sensor control switch aft. If you had the HSI on this page, for example, all right, I'd press sensor control switch right, and then I'd press sensor control switch right again, to cycle between. So whichever page it's on, that's the direction you want to press to cycle between the two pages. Okay, hope that helps. So we are on the SA page, and we're going to bump the scale out by pressing N for November, that's what I bound it to. All right, so we're at scale 160, I can press step, and I can see this guy now is at 0.6 Mac, he's at Angels 52.2 and he's flying right at me. Now if you can get a bearing to him, so bearing 324 for 71 miles. So on my radar, I've made my radar, my center control, center of interest, got the little diamond there so I can use my TDC. Bump my range out, I can see him now, okay? So this here is important. So a lot of people see this happen a lot. So this right here, 0.6 diamond with a little uh, dash and 52 that there is transposed off of this okay so if i pause and I just hit step and pause again okay that there 0 0.6 51.9 0 
51. That is that just put up here, okay? My radar doesn't see this target. Everyone gets confused and thinks as soon as this pops up on the radar page, oh, there we go, my radar sees it. And then if we unpause, and then I just press TWS, uh, sorry, um, TDC to press to lock it, it doesn't do anything, okay? It's not locking, they're like, it's not locking, why not? Okay, because your radar doesn't see it. So we're gonna see in a second, the range in the F-18 with the radar is just past 40 nautical miles in optimum conditions. And optimum conditions is the target is higher than you and they're flying straight at you. Okay, so at the moment he's at Angel's 50 and he's about 60 nautical mile out. Okay, so there's 60 nautical mile range, this is 40, this is 20. So we're gonna bump it down to 40 and we're just gonna wait for him to come in. So once it gets to 40, we should get a lock. It should pop up and then when it does, we're gonna pause it and we'll quickly explain symbology. Uh, we'll run through a, a BVR attack with the AMRAM. So we're just cruising in here. He is 64 nautical mile from us still. I'm sorry, that's our uh, AWAX. He's 46 nautical mile. Let's get him on the nose. And this number 29 here, this is our RWR transposed over our radar. It's our RWR signal. So there's a 29, MiG-29 in that direction on the RWR. So this just helps you, gives you more information. All right, there we go. All right, so let's hit pause. Uh, we'll step it out. We can't do that. Okay. Right, there we go. Okay, so what we're seeing here, now that you can see there is a little brick in there and you can see these other bricks here so these are old refreshes of the radar so each time the radar sweeps across because remember we changed our data from 4 to 16 so this one right at the back here this will drop off once 16 seconds is elapsed that'll disappear okay and it's just going to keep refreshing this front one and it's going to stay on there so that's why we're getting that little tail forming now so if I uh, changed it to 4 we wouldn't have this tail forming behind the target but we need that because if you don't have that on the radar has more chance of losing lock okay we want to give our radar more chance to pick the lock back up so it doesn't drop it in the first place <clears throat> right so what does this mean it's got a number one there it's got a little chevron a little uh, little arrow underneath and then a little staple on the top so the bottom is a donor aircraft so this is a data link um, iff so this is saying that the target that our radar now sees has been ID'd by a friendly donor aircraft, and in this case, it is our AWACS. Okay, our AWACS has said that this is a hostile target. Okay, it's got a diamond underneath. So diamond underneath means it's been IFF'd by another friendly aircraft to say it's a diamond, or a friendly or an enemy. <clears throat> it's got a little staple on top because our radar hasn't figured out what it is yet. Okay, our radar hasn't finished its IFF check, which it does automatically. Okay, so once our radar determines if it's a friend or foe with its IFF, which is IFF identify friend foe, it's going to change it to a solid diamond, which means the top means our radar says it's a enemy, and the bottom means that a AWACS or a friendly, another friendly has said it's an enemy as well. So it has been essentially double checked that yes, it is a bandit, you want to shoot it down. Okay, so as soon as our radar does that, it's going to change from the uh, the square or the staple on top to a red diamond. And then the little tail here, this is the direction that the aircraft is cruising towards us. Okay, so it's flying straight at us, and it's about just under 40 nautical mile from us, flying straight at us hot. Okay, so I'm going to unpause now. We're going to slew our radar down. So we are in range. I'm going to press TDC to press. We're just going to wait for it. There we go, and we're gonna press pause. So now you can see our radar has finished its interrogation. It's put a red, or it's put a diamond on top. And as soon as we, our, our radar does an IFF, it's gonna change the color. So if it was a half circle, it would go green, which would mean it's a friendly. And if it's a diamond, it'll go red on the radar. And then in our HUD, we've got some ranging information and more information we'll go through real quick. We'll finish off with the radar. So this line here, this is our missile engagement range so we've got r min no escape and r max so this is our maximum range 
that we can fire our AMRAM at. So at the moment, we are in range to shoot an AMRAM. Okay, we can shoot it and if it doesn't manoeuvre, it will get shot. As the missile or as we get closer to the target, okay, this next line is a no escape, missile no escape. All right, and what that means, if you fire a missile at a target that's within these two lines, right, the, uh, the probability of kill is extremely, extremely high. Okay, because the missile is going to have a lot more energy to maneuver and chase down the defending target. Okay, so if you fire between these two lines here, you're going to have a way better chance of actually killing the target you're shooting at. If you shoot way out here at R max, you're not going to hit them most of the time. Okay, because especially if you're doing PvP, if you're doing PvP and you're shooting at targets right on R max, you're not going to hit anything because people aren't that silly. Okay, they'll they'll trash your shot before it's even happened right so that's your radar <clears throat> we've also got um our bra so bearing range and altitude so bearing is 327 for 35.3 nautical mile and the altitude is 48 angels 48 and we can also see here on the hud now uh, we've got some symbology so if i just pause my track ir again right so this is the target that's where it is. So that is where it is in relation to us in real time. And the HUD is up there. It's got the diamond, which means it is a enemy. This little dot, all right, is our, uh, you want to put this dot, I can't remember, it's ASE. I don't know what it stands for exactly. You want to put this dot in this big circle, okay? You want to maneuver your aircraft to put this little dot in the big circle, and that's going to give your missile the, the, the best trajectory to hit the target, all right? So for best shots, you want to put the dot in the circle. I'm going to give your missile the best chance. It's got a little diamond above because that is saying that we have got a donor aircraft, and in this case it's the AWACS, has said that, yes, it is also an enemy. So we've got that to say that right, as a double assurance of like, yes, another aircraft has IFF this contact, and it also has come back as an enemy. So when you get the double diamond, you're pretty much 100%. You can shoot it, and it's an enemy. We've got... More symbology. So we've got our MiG-29 nails. So this is off our um, RWR, just transposed onto the, the HUD. We've got a big circle. And in that big circle, okay, we've got 12 o'clock all the way through back to 12 o'clock. On the inside is our ranging information. So this little dash here, that dash, that is the range to our aircraft. And as we get closer, this dash is going to unwind. It's going to come all the way in. To zero so if we just flew straight at this aircraft as soon as we got and we just flew past it this would go all the way right to 12 o'clock and then it disappeared because we'd lost a lot because we flew past them right so that's our ranging cue on the inside of the hud on the inside of the circle there we've also got on the outside here these numbers 1180 vc so this is your closure rate in knots that you are going to intercept okay so at the moment at my airspeed which is mach 1.52 plus their airspeed, which is 0.5 Mac, we have a closure rate of 1,180 knots, all right, with the angles that we're flying at each other and the airspeeds we're traveling. So we've got a closure rate of 1,180. Our range, 35.3 nautical miles. That's our range to the target. And then we've got a countdown timer here, so 3.5 ACT. So this is your countdown timer until the missile goes active. Okay, so the seeker head in the actual AIM-120, in 35 seconds, if we were to fire a missile right now, it would take 35 seconds of missile flight time until it was close enough to activate its own radar to guide itself in. So we'd have to guide the missile for 35 seconds before it turned itself on and tracked the target by itself. Okay, when this timer gets down to zero, it'll count down from 35 to zero. When it hits zero, it'll change to another countdown timer, usually about 10 seconds or so. Um, and it'll say TTG, which is, I think, time to target. And it'll count down to zero. And then when it hits zero, that's theoretically when the missile will impact, you know, plus or minus a couple of seconds. You should see a splash. Or if it missed, you won't see an explosion. So that's your countdown timer for the MRAM. And then on the, the, uh, the, uh, the circle as well, we've got this little arrow here. Okay, this little guy, this is the direction that the target is flying in relation to you. So he is flying straight at us. Okay, his nose hot on us. If the uh, arrow was pointing out this way, he'd be flying from our right to our left. If it was pointing this way, he'd be flying from our left to our right. And if it was at the top, he'd be flying away from us. All right, he'd have his tail to us flying in the same direction. 
So that's that. And then this little guy. So we've got triangles, one triangle, two triangle, three triangle. So this is our R max, right? Which is the exact same as this guy here. Okay, that line there is this triangle, R max. That line there is right where the contact is. This next triangle is no escape, which is that line there. And then our final triangle is our arm in, which is the minimum range you can fire the AMRAM that it will hit a target. So if you get too close, the AMRAM can't maneuver because you're too close for the missile, it won't hit. So you want to fire a kill shot between these two arrows, okay, between these two arrows. And this is all dynamic. It's going to change all the time based on your airspeed, the target's airspeed, your altitude, the target's altitude, and your aspect and the target's aspect. So it's all going to be changing dynamically. So these will not be a set number for every single situation. The higher you are, the longer range you're gonna have. The lower you are to the ground, the less range you'll have with your missile, okay? Because higher altitude, there's less air density, which means there's less drag on the missile, which means the missile can fly faster and longer without slowing down, which is why you've got longer ranges at high speed and high altitude, which is why BVR combat is all about airspeed and altitude. So if you're fighting PVP and you're at a thousand feet off the ground, and you're fighting an F-16 that's at, you know, Angels 40, and they're doing Mach 1.7, and they're flying straight at you, and they can see you with the radar, the chances of you dying are pretty much 100%, and them dying are zero to you, okay? Because they have got the airspeed and altitude advantage. Their missile is going to be traveling way faster than yours can to get up. So yours has to climb all the way up to 40,000 feet, number one, to hit them, all right? So it's losing speed as it's climbing, and then once the rocket motor burns out, it's slowing down straight away. So your missile is going to just burn all of its energy to try and get up to 40,000 feet. Whereas the, uh, the guy at 40,000, they can just lob it. It can just cruise up as fast and high as it wants and then just spear in at like super, super crazy speed and just smack you out of the air. And I'm sure you've had that happen to you if you've done PVP before. That's why altitude and speed is important. So these are going to change. So you want to do a kill shot within these two carrots these two triangles okay you can fire beforehand but the chances of you getting a kill are best when you fire between these two numbers so they call it a posturing shot so if they were pushing at you you could fire an early one to give them a uh, a missile out early so they'd have to defend or do something so they don't just fly at you hot all right and it's called a posturing shot to try and put them on the defensive early especially if you're flying against um AI aircraft are pretty dumb for that. You can fire an early one and as soon as it goes active, they'll kind of start defending straight away and then you can kind of put them on the defensive and then you can press them and shoot them down. Um, or newer players, okay, newer players that are new to DCS, you can fire one early. Their radar, Ardebrow, is going to go off its tits. It'll start beeping, saying missile warning, missile warning, and they're going to crap their pants and go, oh my God, I'm going to die, even though the missile's ages away, not going to hit them it's going to make them freak out and then they go on defensive. So this is where knowing knowledge about how fast and how high the target is, is how dangerous the target is. You know, like if, if it was in the situation of say there was a, a target down super low though. So this guy was at a thousand feet and he was doing 0.5 Mac and he shot a missile at me from uh, down there at 35 nautical mile. I pretty much wouldn't even worry about it. Okay, it wouldn't even work because by the time it gets to me, it's going to be going so slow that I'm going to be, you know, be able to defeat it. Whereas if he was at, uh, say, we're at 35,000 feet, if he was at Angels 45 and doing Mach 1.8 and he fired at me from this range, that is a very dangerous missile. Okay, I want to be doing something about that because it's going to be traveling way faster when it gets to me, right? Anyways, it's enough jibber-jabber about tactics. Now we're going to do a crank maneuver against this SU-27. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to unpause it. We've got him locked up. We're going to switch from TWS manual mode to TWS auto. And the reason we do that, in TWS manual, you have to manually keep the radar elevation and the TDC or the radar sweeping over the target. Okay, when you put in auto, it does it automatically. So you don't have to worry about that. So we're going to switch to TWS auto and we're going to crank to the left or the right. Okay, so when we do a crank, you're going to put the radar or the target on either the far left of your radar or 
the far right of your radar. So you don't want to go off the screen and lose lock. You want to keep them right on the edge of your radar's ability to keep a lock. And you're going to be doing max speed. So we're going to keep our afterburners on at Mach 1.52. And we're going to hold them there until we get to about 20 nautical mile range. Okay, so we're going to just watch the countdown timer for the range. As soon as it gets to 20, we're going to turn in. So we're going to, let's, in this case, we'll crank to the right. So we're going to turn right, heading out this way, until this radar contact is right on the edge of our radar. And we're going to stay there until it gets to 20 nautical mile. Once we get to 20, we're going to turn back in, nose hot on the target. So we're going to go right, and we're going to hook in, and we're going to turn left. As soon as we turn left and we get this little dot into this circle, we're going to fire our weapon straight away. And we're just going to keep on turning left until the radar contact okay so he's going to be on this side we're going to turn to our left he's going to drift across into the center we're going to fire at him we're going to keep turning left so that the radar puts him on the right hand side all right we're going to keep him right on the edge of our radar on the right hand side and what we're doing there is we're making it so that if he did fire a missile at us his missile is going to have to travel way over here because we're going to turn to the uh, sorry to the right Okay, we're going to turn to the right, so he's going to, if he fired a missile, his missile is going to have to go crazy right to try and intercept us, because we're going to be doing Mach 1.5 heading this way, All right? So his missile is going to go, well, I need to be heading out here, because the missile goes for an intercept point, All right? It tries to do a, an intercept on you, so it's going to pull lead to try and predict where you're going to be at your airspeed. So it's going to be hooking out this way. So once we get to 20, we're going to turn back into the left, fire a missile so if his missile was heading out this way right it's cruising out here we do a left hand turn now his missile is going to go oh shit now i got to go back so it's going to have to turn this way and chase us back across the way it just came from and you're going to bleed all of the missiles energy off and it's going to be out of steam so it'll still be beeping at you going beep 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 beep, beep missile 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 but it's going to be going slow and it's not going to be a factor okay so you've got to hold your nerve trust the process and you'll be able to get the job done so we're going to do that now so unpause we're going to switch to TWS auto mode and we're going to crank to the right. Turn the red pilot off. So I'm still an Arthur Burner, so you want to be gentle with your turns, don't bleed off too much speed. And if you rip in, you're going to bleed a heap of airspeed off. Remember, speed is king. Let's change our range down. So we're in TWS auto, We've still got lock. Keep cranking, we don't want to bleed speed off. Almost at range, right on the edge of the radar. So we're going to straighten up now. And we're just going to keep him there. All right, and we're just looking for a range of 20 nautical miles. So he's still coming at us hot. We get closure at a 760, 740 nautical mile, 740 knots, I should say. Keep him on the edge. We're looking for 20 nautical mile. Turn back in right now. So we're going to start coming back around. You can see our ranging, it is collapsing in now because we've got maximum speed, pulling our nose in for a shot. As soon as that, that, uh, that dot gets into the, the HUD, Keep cranking to the left now. All right, there's our countdown timer. One second to active. Missile's gone active now. We've got 10 seconds to impact. Just keep cranking right until it gets right on the edge of the radar. And then we should see a splish splash. Boom. You're dead, son. And that's how you do a crank. Aircraft destroyed. Now, that guy didn't shoot at us. <clears throat> so let's do a quick quick uh, swap out of the target and let's put in a let's put a Tomcat in let's do it let's do it a run cap F14 give him a couple of Phoenix that'll loop what's this dude's altitude at 55,000 feet god damn let's make it uh 40,000, and we'll make him going, uh, yeah, that'll do for now. All right. So Tomcat, hmm, maybe not a Tomcat. Let's do a, we'll do a J11. Just because the Tomcat's got better range with the, uh, 
the Phoenix. It's going to be able to shoot at us earlier. So we'll go back to go China and cap. We're going to put a J11 in and we'll give it the R77s. All right, so that's the, uh, the Russian Amramsky. All right, which is the same. It's essentially the Amram, but Russian version. All right, there we go. So we'll fire this up. So we're going to do the same thing now. So it's going to be able to shoot at us. And we're going to do, do the same thing. And then that'll do us. All right, it's been uh, going on for a while. But hopefully you guys are learning some things here. So good loadout. That's our enemy right there. All right, so we're going to do the exact same thing we just did before. We're going to spawn in. We're going to go full afterburner, set our weapons, our radar pages up just as we did before. We're going to do a crank maneuver, except this guy is going to be able to shoot at us now. So we're going to hit fly, full afterburner, select AMRAM, radar right process and small, size small, and then 4 bar, 40, no, 40 mile, change the data to 16. Uh, we're on a 40 degree sweep and on interleave, press set to save, turn that J hammocks on, SA page up, I pull it on, and let's have a looky. Alright, so I just used the keyboard binds for the scale and the step, so I can see he's at 0.7 Mac at angels 34.5. He has a bearing 3, 2, 4, it's pretty much right there. 92 nautical mile. Okay, so there's his bearing there, bearing range and aspect 324 for 90. And we've got his airspeed information right there 0.8 Mac, 0.8 Mac at 33.4 thousand feet. Just stepping the range up for my radar with the bind that we went through at the start. Again, that is not him, he is not seen by a radar yet. That's just transposed information from our situation awareness page onto our radar. That is not a radar contact. Right, we just I just bump the scale out so I can fly at him pretty much. Turn that on. That one's small as well. Alright, let's put our EW page up here. Step it down. Alright, looks like he's committing on us now. So you can see his little uh, his little tadpole is pointing straight at us now. So he's definitely seen us. He's coming our way. So it's Angel 36. He should start increasing now. We just lost contact off the AWACS. Drop lock. So he's uh, speeding up now. Angel's 36.1. He's at Mach 1. So he's increasing his airspeed and flying towards us. So now we can just make sure our radar elevation is in the right spot. So he's at Angels 36 and he's going to be around here. We'll be getting a lock. So as long as we keep our TDC cursor in those ranges, so he's at Angels 36, coming straight at us. Once he gets to here, we should start to be able to get a lock. All right, and then remember, we were looking for the little brick. As soon as the brick appears, we can press TDC to press to lock him up with the TWS lock. There we go. So now our radar has picked him up. Okay, it is. We've got the brick there. Our radar sees him. So we've lost that um, the data link transpose bit. It's about to appear. And you can see on our SA page it's changed. So that is now our radar is changing over and showing us that our radar has got to lock down there. So if we unpause, it's going to pop up with the same symbology when we mouse over it, TDC over it, press TDC to press. We have got a lock now. We've got all of our information, just like we went through before. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to crank out to the left or to the right. We're going to pick a direction. We're going to crank out, and then we'll turn back in and take a shot. Right, let's unpause and do exactly that. So let's crank left this time, just for something different. All right, so we're trying to keep as much airspeed as we can, so we don't want to be super aggressive with your, uh, your maneuvers. Try and keep airspeed increasing. Let's, um, Ideally, you want to punch off your fuel tank. A bit more speed on the jet. 
Oh, and there we go. That's uh, my bad there. So we're in range while scan. So let's pause it right there. So my bad, but we can fix this up real quick. So because we weren't in TWS, but this would be the same as if you were in um, TWS manual. So you can see we had him locked up and our radar is still scanning just here. Okay, it's scanning in the center. It's not following. So in TWS, uh, let's just unpause quickly, so switch. All right. So our radar is going to keep scanning here because we're in manual mode. So if we want the radar to follow him, we have to move the TDC and press TDC to press to keep sweeping the radar to follow. All right. So if I unpause, we're going to lose lock on him, which we have. So now I need to TDC to press, get him again. And then we're going to switch to TWS auto and keep cranking over. So he's locking us up now. He's probably fired a missile at us. For sure. Let's see. Let's see what we can see. Almost there. Alright, let's turn in. So we're going to pull in nice and hard now. As soon as you get him in the crosshairs, we're going to fire right in the center of the circle. We're just going to keep cranking out to the right. Fox 3. And just keep pulling over to the right until we get him on the left hand side of the radar. He is going defensive. So now we can follow him if we had to. And splash. Alright, so that is one dead bandit. And he didn't even get a shot off. So he may have fired at us with an R-77. We don't know. But um, let me just quickly bring up the TAC view. Let's have a quick look. Okay, so this is the difference. Apologize if it's uh, a little bit hard to see here. So he's flying at us straight. Okay, he's not doing a crank. We are doing a crank. So if he fired a missile right now, his missile would come off the rail and it would have to hook it out to his right okay because we're heading this direction so the missile is going to go on the quickest intercept path to intercept so his missile is going to go beep, chuck a right so we are making his missile pull lead out this way okay sucks he didn't fire at us but it is what it is all right so we're making this is why the crank works so we're making his missile if he's fired we're bleeding speed off the missile all right, once we hit 20 nautical mile, we're turning in. So if his missile was heading out this way, it's now going, oh, shit, he's maneuvering. So the missile's going to turn back in and start chasing us. And when it makes the turn, it's going to bleed even more speed off that it didn't have. And then by the time it gets nose on us, we're still doing Mach 1.3 here. It's going to be way slower than Mach 1.3, and it's going to be no factor. So we've defeated the missile. Whereas this missile, we've fired it at him within, uh, what was that? We fired at around... What, time, what range did the missile come off? So we fired at about 14, 15 nautical miles. We fired that missile and then we continued our crank. So if he's fired a missile at us again, um, we're keeping our airspeed up. So we've got the ability to continue. So if he fired at us again and we saw it, we could turn cold and split us away and keep our airspeed up and then still get the kill on old main. So that's where the crank works. Okay, so that is the crank in a nutshell. Missile BVR combat done and done. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was uh, a little bit longer than intended, but I, you know, had to cover some stuff. So hopefully it helped. If it did, make sure you leave in the comments um, any questions, queries, or uh, you know, if it helped, if it didn't help, let me know in the comments as always, and I'll do my best to get back to you guys as quick as we can. And thank you heaps. If you did like the video, really appreciate it. If you hit the like button, it helps the uh, the channel get a little bit more exposure on the YouTube. And if you haven't already, um, and you like the content, really appreciate it. If you'd hit the subscribe button as well, help the brother out and uh, keep us chipping away up our way towards the 10,000 subscribers. Can we get there anytime soon? Let's see, let's see how we go. So yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks for all the subscribers. Thanks for the new subscribers. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for the comments. Love hearing from all you guys in the uh, comment section. So keep it up. And um, yeah, big shout out to the Patreon and the YouTube members as well. Those guys that support the channel. Um, appreciate you guys 
also all a bunch of legends. Thank you very much. All right, guys, that's enough rambling by me. Hope you enjoyed it. Go shoot some things and kill some stuff. See you later.